Stu Minchu, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, John. Yeah, uh, you know, it's been fun chatting with you in the pre-interview and getting to know you a little bit, and I'm excited to have a chance to, to chat about your area of expertise, which is helping entrepreneurs uh, overcome the mental roadblocks that they face when they're leading their business. Um, so today we're going to be talking about responding to workplace mental challenges uh, as a leader, both for the leader themselves, but also for their people, for their team. As we get started, I just wanted to read Stu's bio for everyone. Um, Stu Menchu is the founder and CEO of The Thoughtful Entrepreneur, where he coaches exhausted and overwhelmed entrepreneurs to create balance in their lives. He is also a facilitator for Co-Starters, a program that equips aspiring entrepreneurs to turn their passions into a sustainable, thriving endeavor. As a serial entrepreneur, uh, Stu has previously started three businesses, two located in East Africa and one in the United States. You can connect with him online at thethoughtfulentrepreneur.com. And I'll also link Stu to your uh, LinkedIn profile in the show notes so people can get connected with you there as well. Um, again, a uh, real pleasure to have you on the podcast today. And before we dive into the discussion, anything else you would like to share with listeners uh, by way of personal background, context, uh, anything like that? Yeah, so how I got to, to working with entrepreneurs in, in this field is experiencing some of these issues myself as an entrepreneur, like you mentioned, um, experiencing you know, fear and anxiety and even burnout in my journey. Um, I've also been working with entrepreneurs for the past seven years, mainly in operations and finance. And as I was working with them, seeing them encounter these struggles um, as a leader and trying to, to grow their businesses and grow their teams, experiencing a lot of this you know, anxiety and burnout as well. And just realizing, you know, looking at the research and realizing how big of a problem it was, um, really a little over a year ago, it kind of shifted to working with entrepreneurs in this space. Um, like I said, just seeing how big of a problem it was and how it, it needed resources out there to address and equip entrepreneurs and leaders to overcome some of these mental roadblocks that they face. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. And I think that's just so needed. I mean, at any time it's needed, but right now within the context we're in, um, I think it's, it's a heightened level of stress and anxiety and challenge. And so many small businesses are struggling to stay afloat. Um, you know, and, and leaders carry a lot of burden, you know, in terms of obviously they're, they're trying to keep, you know, from an operation standpoint, they're trying to keep things afloat. They're trying to uh, be effective and efficient, uh, make payroll, and those sorts of things. But also, you know, thinking not only about their own mental health and physical well-being, but that of their employees, uh, balancing all of that and recognizing that their people rely on them. You know, if, I, if I'm an entrepreneur and a leader of a small business, um, you know, I, I have people that rely on me for their livelihood and, and that's a lot of, uh, pressure, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, not just for yourself, but for others and, and families that rely on you. So, you know, I think, I think that builds up over time unless we as, unless we, um, can establish healthy mechanisms and, uh, approaches to dealing with, uh, those challenges on an ongoing basis, you know, practicing self-care and making sure that we're taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. Yeah, I mean, that's very true. You know, that, that's the thing is anxiety in itself is not always a bad thing. It can, it can help you make decisions. You know, like you were mentioning, if you see that your cash flow is getting low, you need to make some changes and make some pivots um, to change that so you can meet your payroll. Um, the problem is when we get too much anxiety and it becomes overwhelming and we can't move forward. And that happens a lot um, amongst entrepreneurs and leaders in general. It's just, it builds up. And, you know, a lot of that is, is because of kind of can be our culture. You know, we have kind of this story that our value comes from our work. And so we put ourselves fully into our work and kind of neglect our other areas of lives. And it also happens when we face challenges like we're facing now with, you know, the, the pandemic and things like that. And so there's a lot of, you know, uncertainty out there. And so that can cause that anxiety to come in bigger ways and can cause it to paralyze us and keep us from making the decisions we need to make to move forward or to pivot or, or do, you know, tap into this creativity that we need to make some of these hard decisions that, that have to happen during this time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I'm wondering, as you work with 
entrepreneurs as part of your organization uh, and, and you do coaching and you go out and do trainings and things like that. What are some of the areas that you focus on to help um, leaders overcome those mental barriers, to overcome the, the stress, the anxiety, kind of those, those um, consistently nagging types of challenges that people have to face and they have to learn how to deal with? Yeah. So, so we talked about anxiety and so I, I really focus on that. And then also if anxiety hangs around for too long, it can turn out to turn into burnout um, and start moving in that direction. And that, you know, le it leads to a lack of motivation, feeling ineffective and frust getting frustrated and, and cynicism. So, so when I go in and work with different individuals or uh, groups of, of people, I'm looking at those two things that really that anxiety, that kind of in the moment things that you're thinking about, but also the long-term effects that it can have. And so when going out there and looking at it, we really have to understand what, how is this affecting us? And it really affects the, the brain and how the brain functions. When that threat is, is present, when we're feeling that anxiety, it shuts down that rational kind of slow thinking part of the brain. And it, it um, relies on that unconscious reaction part. So if you think of that fight or flight or freeze, you know, if we've heard about that, that's what kicks in when we're experiencing. And so we have that tunnel vision. And so it's hard for us to tap into our creativity. And so we have to understand that first and understand how the anxiety, how our burnout is affecting us. So that's kind of that first stage is how, how is it affecting us, keeping us from tapping into our creativity, keeping us from making decisions, what long-term burnout, you know, affects is burnout having in our lives. And, you know, that can cause us to become more prone to anxiety and mood disorders. It can increase addictive behaviors. Um, our physical health can even start to deteriorate. So that's the first thing is really helping people understand if you don't address it, it can have detrimental effects to not only your work that you're doing, but also your mental and physical health. And so then when we do, when we realize that now we can say, okay, what's the, the root cause of this anxiety? And a lot of times it's wrapped up in our identity. Um, for example, if we view ourselves as being successful you know, whether that's a successful leader and successful entrepreneur, that can become our sole focus. And we, you know, do things day to day in our lives that are going to hopefully help us succeed and get power and authority and admiration. Um, and this could be happening even below our, well, our awareness. You know, it comes from messages from our culture, maybe books we've read, what, what our, you know, how we view what a successful person is. And so, when we do that and we get our value from those things, um, that can really burn us out and we can, you know, sacrifice other parts of our lives, you know, even though we may be, you know, husband or a wife or a mom or a dad, we, we tend to sacrifice those relationships in order to, you know, get this success. And so we've got to realize that we may either consciously or unconsciously have those identities in our mind that that's what we're trying to become. And we've got to realize that maybe that's detrimental to some of these other relationships. And if it is, well, then I have to go back and reframe what is my identity around the work that I'm doing? And how do I, how do I start to change the way that I'm approaching that? Um, how do I start to change the way that I'm viewing myself? And what does success mean for me? Is it really just my you know, work relationships and you know, what I'm doing in my work? Or do I want to see success in other parts of my life, with my relationships, with my family, with my friends, with myself and how I'm taking care of myself. So you've really got to dig into, okay, you know, let's, let's find out if, how these anxieties are affecting you. And now let's deal with the root causes of what's causing those identities in your life and start to address, you know, those types of issues. Yeah, you, you raised some really, really important points. And I think that identity issue and, and you know, just grappling with our sense of self, um, what drives us, what motivates us, why are we doing what we're doing, you know, asking those types of questions um, is really important. And it's hard internal work that we have to do because we get socialized, you know, to, to prioritize certain things. And, and frankly, you know, I think a lot of people never really question it. They, they never even look to disrupt you know, what they 
feel expected to do or what they, you know, how, how um, society defines success. And they just, so they go down a pathway and then, you know, sometimes they, they find themselves 20 years into a career really realizing <laughs> that they don't actually like what they're doing. They don't, you know, it doesn't fit with them, but they were doing it because they felt like that was what they should do. That's what people expected of them to do. That's what success looks like without realizing they made all these choices along the way because of those external expectations, not fully recognizing, realizing, you know, what, what matters most to them and what should be driving them towards their own personal definition of success. Um, that's, you know, and there, it, that's hard work and there's no like blanket answer. That's, that's the issue is, you know, we can't go on what society frames as successful because you know, it's going to be unique to you and to me and to our family context. And it, it, it's different for everybody. Um, there are common principles, of course, but, you know, it, everyone has to make those decisions. And, and I feel like when stress and anxiety um, and burnout are high, there's often an incongruence that's present um, with individuals and their life situation, you know, whether that's incongruence in home life and congruence in work life, whatever. Um, and, and we, we have to find ways to address that. We have to be willing to address it. Uh, otherwise we we'll, we're only going to ever put band-aids on the problem. We're never going to really, mm -hmm. uh, address the core issues as you were referring to. Um, but, but that's hard work. And a lot of people don't like holding up the mirror in front of them and really critically analyzing themselves and going through that self-reflective process. Um, so how do you help, you know, especially, you know, highly motivated, um, driving types of entrepreneurial types of people, um, how do you help them, you know, to, to be willing to take a step back, to calm their mind, to, to find quiet time, to ha go through that self-reflective process? Yeah. So you've really got to, that's a great question. So you really got to dive into actually, you know, having, you know, not doing that is hurting the work that you're doing and hurting your performance. Um, cause like we said, when you, when you have this anxiety around these identities that, you know, are oftentimes unhealthy for you, that I, you know, that anxiety is inhibiting your creative thinking process. You're not able to tap into your creativity. You're not being able to make good decisions. So when you start to address those, and start to reframe how you think about success, how you think about yourself, then that anxiety starts to go down. And you're not so attached to that success that when it becomes threatened, that that anxiety rises up in you. Now when it's threatened, you can say, okay, yeah, it's getting threatened, you know, but I can approach it in a, in a reasonable manner. I can think through it. I can start to look at all the information I have in front of me and make a good rational decision and you see a lot of you know incredible things come out of that. Like I said, you start to tap into that creative creativity. So you see a boost in creativity. You start to make better, more well-informed decisions. Um, people's motivation and confidence starts to increase. And not only on a professional side, but they also start to experience this on a personal side as well. You know, as they're able to uh, dive more into their personal relationships with their friends and families and, and be more present in those relationships. Um, you also see people start to become more inspirational leaders. They start to develop, you know, if you're familiar with a growth mindset, they start to become more compassionate um, with their teams. They become more engaged and committed as they're not experiencing this burnout that they might have been experiencing before. So they're able to step in with their teams and come alongside them and be more grateful a lot of times, you know. And so that's kind of the motivation I tell people, you know, if we if we take the work if we take the time to do the work to make this happen, it's actually going to increase your pro productivity. You're going to be a better leader. You're going to take better care of your team. And then the last thing is you're going to be healthier as a person. You're going to feel better. A lot of this time, the, the mental um, strain that we're, we feel affects our affects us physically as well. And we start to experience those health problems. So as you start to address that, you actually get to, to a healthier way of life. You know, a lot of the people I work with start exercising more, taking better care of themselves. Um, so they do get to a healthier place and they, you know, they end up being less sick, you know, taking, you know, fewer sick days and, and being able to, again, be more present in the work that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's all really important to remember. 
and and then we can operationalize you know once we start to do that self-reflective work and we we uh, we start to you know reconsider our the elements of our identity we start to pull that apart we can de deconstruct it a little bit put it back together mm -hmm. in a more healthy way we can uh at that point we can um start to put in place mechanisms to, of self care um that mm -hmm. can manage the ongoing in, in, inevitable challenges that we're going to face right there's always going to be stresses yeah. and anxieties mm -hmm. they don't magically go away just because we get in better alignment <laughs> you know yeah. um they just may take different forms and so you know it can be really simple things like making sure that you take a little bit of time every day for mindfulness practices and and that can mm -hmm. be a lot of different things you know and I'm not talking about a lot of time. I'm like literally 10, yeah. 15 minutes, you know, of time daily um, can make a huge, huge difference. Um, and, you know, for some people that's meditation or prayer. Um, uh, for some people that's getting out into nature. You know, we were talking before our interview today about how we both love the outdoors. So going on a nice hike. You know, I love going out with my dogs and up the canyon or going, you know, just even at the park or by our house, you know, and just, just being able to clear my mind for a little bit of time makes a big difference. You know, that, that kind of physical activity also helps and it gives me opportunity to, to just decompress and process mentally what I'm dealing with. Um, and, you know, there's no like right or wrong way to do that. It's, mm -hmm. you know, e every individual person has to kind of find what works for them. Uh, but but it's important, you know. Find find what works for you. Maybe that's joining a you know a yoga class or doing mm -hmm. Zumba or, or CrossFit or something. Maybe that's you know uh, simply taking walks, doing stretch breaks. Um, you know, there's so many different things that are pretty simple. But when you do them consistently over time, it, it really makes a big impact on your physiological health, which impacts your mental um, well-being. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So that's one of the things that I actually, one of the first steps I, I take with people that I work with is I get them to start doing what I call the weekly 140. And so that's just 20 minutes a day. And so it adds up to 120 minutes over the week and to focus on one of three areas. So either do something physically, do something mentally, or do something emotionally to take care of yourself. And, you know, like you said, on the physical realm, that could be exercising, could be yoga, hiking, swimming, jogging, you know, dancing, just, you know, eating healthy. On the mental side, it could be meditation or prayer. It could be journaling, you know, being still, taking a nap, or emotionally, it could be, you know, meeting with a community or just meeting with someone for coffee or doing, you know, random act of kindness, doing mindfulness, listening to music, getting out in nature, practicing gratitude. But yeah, just doing that 20 minutes a day. And once my clients start to do that, they really start to notice the impact that that makes and they start to feel better and have more clarity and start making better decisions. And they usually actually increase it from there um, to, to see how, you know, to see where that goes. And it, it just, continues to increase the results that they're they're feeling in the first place yeah. yeah yeah absolutely you know another one for me personally um is i just love music and so just just mm -hmm. i'm not like particularly talented but you know I, I love music and so i love singing i love listening to music i you know dabble on the guitar a little bit so just mm -hmm. you know having a chance to disconnect and just let the creativity flow a little bit um and and kind of stretch a, a different kind of muscle, you know, a different part of my brain, a different kind of uh, talent. Um, you know, there, there's, I guess my point is there's just so many different types of ways that mm -hmm. if, if we tap into those things consistently, that we're just going to be happier, we're going to be healthier. Um, so in, in the last uh, several minutes that we have, I thought maybe we could, we could turn this a little bit and focus on you know, what does it look like if I'm a leader, I need to do this myself, right? So that mm -hmm. I, so that I'm healthy, so that I'm productive. But how do I help my team to do it? Yeah, I think the, the biggest way that you can help your team is to encourage them in the, those same practices, you know, first practicing compassion with them, but then encouraging them. If you see them start to develop unhealthy habits, of, you know, working long hours, or you see them getting stressed, you see them feeling anxiety, start to encourage them to take better care of themselves, you know, spend that time, 
you know, taking, you know, like I said, in the weekly 140, taking that 20 minutes a day to focus on themselves and encouraging them. Um, and maybe even, you know, putting some kind of a reward system around that, you know, if they yeah, have a streak of every day of being able to take care of themselves, you know, whether that be physically, mentally, or emotionally, um, because, you know, it's important to do that because not, I, we talked about increasing your productivity, but that's going to help your team as well. It's going to help them get to a better state. It's going to help them take, um, make better decisions, tap into their creativity, and improve the team's performance at a whole. So it's really important that you encourage these types of activities within your team, encouraging them to take better care of themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you said, you said it, it's, it, you know, from a business case perspective, it, there's tremendous benefits to an organization for, for focusing on these things. Um, and so we want people to be more productive. We want more efficiencies. We want lower uh, incidents of, of error or, um, you know, uh, problems with customers and such. So all of that gets better when, yeah. when we have, we have bit more presenteeism, more, we have less absenteeism. We have uh, mm -hmm. people being more mentally and physically engaged in their work actively. Um, all of that gets better when we do all of this and, and we mitigate the, the, the prob the performance problems, the interpersonal problems, the, you know, the other types of people issues that can arise within an organization. And that's from the, the business case side of it. Um, mm -hmm. Setting that aside for a moment, though, even even though we know there's tons of really great reasons, you know, from the, the business side, but just from the human side, you know, like the, 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 the innate value of each individual person as a authentic individual human being that deserves, you know, wellness and, and, you know, if we're leading people with a mindset, of, you know, a growth mindset, as you as you mentioned earlier, where we want everyone to be able to fulfill their potential. We want everyone to be able to have the chance to be their best self, their authentic self, and to be able to contribute and maximize their capabilities. Um, you know that that's a human argument that is super powerful and will will help our team to to push and stretch themselves in, in not in burnout types of ways, but in, in empowering types of ways. Uh, and so, so as we uh, focus on, you know, the business side, the human side, uh, and then we model through our own leadership example, uh, it can make a huge, huge difference and people can start to buy into what we're trying to do. Um, I will say as a caveat to that though, like we can say all the right things. And if I'm a leader and I'm saying, hey, you need to practice this, these wellness, um, elements and I'm going to uh, monetize it, you know, I'm going to, or incentivize it rather. Uh, I'm going to, you know, try to really push this as an initiative. If I say those things, I, you know, and say all the right things, um, but I don't do it myself and I don't mm -hmm. model it for my people, they're not going to do it um, because they're, they're going to follow my example. So, so we need to first get on board ourselves. We need to make those changes and then we need to um, consistently model that through our behavior, through the way we talk, through our interactions with our people, and that can drive a lot of healthy outcomes. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And not only, not only, like you said, the outcomes, but the interpersonal stuff as well. You'll have better relationships with the people on your team. But I think that you said the key thing is you've got to be willing to model it yourself. Yeah, you know, they're not going to take it seriously if they look at you and they see that you're not, you know, practicing what you preach. You're not putting in to, to practice those things as well. So I think that's, that's key as a leader. Absolutely. Well, Stu, it has been a real pleasure. The time has flown by. Um, we're almost to the end uh, of our time together today, but perhaps we can continue this discussion another time. Uh, but before we close today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners a little bit more about how they can get connected with you. Um, uh, if there's anything you want to share uh, by way of upcoming, um, events or, or things you would like uh, listeners to be aware of. And then I'll give you the last word on the topic for today. Yeah. So I'd love to connect with anyone who wants to learn more about these or, you know, who, you know, wants to help them prove them themselves or their team. And so you can find me at the thoughtful entrepreneur.com. You can come there and learn more about my um, coaching program, which is a thoughtful growth um, coaching program. And, and so if that's of interest to you, you can find me 
on the website. You can send me an email, stu at the thoughtful and I'll be happy to, to uh, um, talk with you and um, help you learn more about that. Excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excellent. Um, again, it's been a real pleasure talking today. And as always, I hope that everyone will, will uh, reach out, get connected with Stu as you uh, do with, with other guests on the podcast. Uh, there's so much insight there and so, so many uh, great resources that Stu can help you with. Uh, and I hope everyone will stay healthy and safe, that we can continue to find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope everyone has a great week. Thank you.